NHRA. I've gotten NHRA to allow us to run diesel in top sportsmen and top dragster at NHRA events nationwide. Uh, th they had to make a few tweaks in the rules for us, but we're we're out there and, and now we're hoping to run this top dragster as well. So what we want is the first vehicle to run 200 miles an hour in the quarter mile and in the six second bracket running diesel power. Uh, our engine of choice in this venture is the GM Duramax, 6.6 liter GM Duramax. Uh, it's fully Bosch equipped, both on the wet fuel components and the engine management. Uh, so that's working. The other thing we'd like to do, uh, we've been running Bonneville, I've been running Bonneville for 50 years, uh, the salt flats, top speed. It's a world class place, it's a world class event, and people truly come from all over the world to have the fastest automobile on the planet. Currently, the fastest diesel on the planet is from England. It's a twin-engine, all-wheel drive streamliner. It's been 350 miles an hour. We just retired our streamliner, the Cheek Welch and Banks car, which has run 432 miles an hour. So we know how to go faster than those guys from England, but we weren't running diesel. What we wish to do is build the typical American hot rod streamliner, which is like the one we just retired, only with newer ideas, a single engine, two-wheel drive, pure American hot rod, and we would like to run 375 to 380. We think we have the power and we know we have the aerodynamics to run close to 400 miles an hour, and we want to have a contest with these gentlemen from England, okay. and uh, who are not running any Bosch equipment, by the way. Uh, so it's it's kind of doing these kind of American hot rod, high ingenuity projects, integrating diesel into it, and proving inconclusively that diesel is incredibly powerful. This is, you know, we all know it can pull the big load up the hill, the big class eight semi, or it can, it can be in a locomotive. It's the most fuel efficient way to move heavy stuff across the face of the planet. But when it comes down to performance, the, the word fun, that's the, that's the word I want to prove. We, we talk clean, we talk green, I'm talking mean, real mean yet guilt-free. In other words, I found this a unique thing. With diesel, I can have my cake and eat it too. I can have the power, I can build the hot rod, I can go out, set records, proving the damn thing really does what we say, and I can do it with real high fuel efficiency. The engine we're developing right now in the dyno cell today uh, for the drag race projects is the most fuel efficient engine we've ever run in the history of the company in 50 years. It's making 1,280 horsepower, the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax, 5,500 RPM, which is kind of high speed for a diesel. That's the other thing we're developing at Banks is high speed diesel. And, and it's incredibly powerful. It's a record setting power level. So, we're looking forward to, to a hell of a lot of adventure in the next few years, showcasing the prowess of diesel, so that when the soccer mom says, I want to get that diesel in that new sport ute or that new automobile, the husband says, oh, right on. <laughs> Me too. So are you using any biodiesel in your race engines, or are you sticking with petroleum diesel for now? The, the beauty of diesel is that you can use bio-based fuels. We have an engine in another dyno cell at our place where it's the standard by which we're t testing all the known diesel fuels in the world. Uh, there are a lot of different fuels. Some are gas to liquid, uh, some are bio, uh, some are traditional mineral-based. But in the end, what we're trying to find out is, of these fuels, which, which is the best? which is the best for the high-speed diesel concept that we've been pushing now for 10, 12 years, and which is the best for fuel efficiency. 
So we're analyzing the combustion process in these engines. We're measuring the heat release of the fuel as the piston moves down the bore on the power stroke. The time that it takes for the, the combustion to process. Uh, I'm keenly interested in fuels that release their heat more quickly so I can turn the engine faster. I'm looking at high-speed lightweight diesel. So there's a whole thing that I'm, that angle that I'm after that may be a little different. The beauty of bio, uh, unlike some early biofuels which were made out of soybeans or uh, rapeseed, canola, uh, these are you know kind of foodstock based fuels. We all know, look at the, the ethanol uh, boondoggle that's going on. Price of corn is through the roof. Why is that? We're using corn to make fuel too. You don't want to make your fuel out of a food stock. You want to make your fuel out, uh, fuel out of something that you might be throwing away. So, you know, it's kind of moving from a hydrocarbon economy or, or a hydrocarbon fuel type to a carbohydrate fuel type, where you take waste vegetable matter uh, and you process it in, in such a way as to, as to make fuel out of it. This is happening all over the world. Uh, various universities, uh, research houses, fuel manufacturers. The other, the other one that's really cool uh, and is a form of biofuel is algae-based diesel. Right. If, if you look at the, the production, the fuel output per acre of land involved, yeah, yields from nothing, just oh, unreal. nothing touches algae. Algae is really where it's going. And you can specifically grow the algae type to make a specific fuel type. So to me, that, that, that has just uh, insane possibilities. I mean, just your mind boggles at what you can do with algae-based fuel, and that might well be uh, one of our best approaches. Aside from uh, working with Bosch um, on the fuel system and engine management side, are you working with any other manufacturers right now to transfer some of the technology that you're developing into production engines? Well, uh, the t the t the we're working with Bosch, of course, on the fuel and engine management side, uh, and, and developing our own software set through Bosch Engineering Group uh, to use for something that's real exciting that we're doing, and that's marine engines. Uh, General Motors engaged us in now a few, a few years of discussion uh, of us doing a new marine engine based on the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax. That's occurring. We're working on that. So there's an interaction between us and General Motors regarding that program. Uh, we hope to have those engines online mid next year. Uh, the, as far as technology is concerned, one of the things we found as we push forward with diesel is there's basic engine technology, in other words, the structure of the engine and its durability. Uh, we're working on low mass, high speed, uh, and we're working on lower torque, but higher horsepower. Torque is the inherent advantage of diesel. Uh, but what we're doing is, be, because the powertrain has to be so robust to handle the torque, robust meaning heavy, and the vehicle structure has to be very stiff to handle high torque, why not do it with high speed? And in, in, instead of having the traditional pickup truck diesel engine, where the, the power might be 300 and the torque 600, two to one, so to speak, we're looking to reduce the torque maybe one and a half to one and speed up the engine. That makes the whole vehicle lighter. 